out. Uh, oh, shit. Today on American Outlaw, what happens when you shoot yourself with your own gun? Today I've got one of my best friends. He's been my best friends for a couple of decades. And it's embarrassing for a man to get in front of other men and talk about embarrassing moments like I shot myself. But he was a young man in his 20s. He didn't have a holster and he didn't have any training at all. He is a gun guy, he's not a tactical guy. But today, I wanna to introduce you to my friend, Travis Bussey. What's going on, man? Bussey, it's good to have you here. You shot yourself. Yeah, I did. What, I did. what, so let's start it here. They're all gonna know, what gun did you shoot yourself with? Ah, uh, it was a little Ruger, I think Mark III, little 22. Little 22? I, I think. All right, cool, so, guys, listen, again, uh, don't roast him in the comments. <laughs> Please. Bussy, how old were you when it happened? I think probably about 26. 26. I think. It was about 12 years ago. Yeah, and you're a firearms guy, right? Oh, yeah. I grew up hunting, fishing, shooting competition as a kid in 4-H. I've been around him my whole life. Do a professional class? No. And you're not a tactical guy? No. Yeah. No. So he, he's one of the best shots I've ever seen with a bolt action rifle, um, but but he's not a tactical guy. And I know a lot of you guys are tactical guys, but I think the, the rule applies. And I think this might really help some of you that maybe you think you understand what you need to have whenever you have a firearm in your hand, but maybe you don't. So I'll set the scene for you. Uh, where I used to live, we had kind of a, it was an old ply lake, kind of turned into a communal gun range. Uh, where I lived up about a half a mile away up on top of the hill we could uh, you'd see people pull in every now and then and, and go to shoot and well so me and a few of my buddies we see somebody pull in and and we go down there and it's a, an older gentleman I know that's trying to sight in his rifle so he doesn't see very well and, and he asked me to to sight it in for him so I, I shoot I want to say three shots probably and and uh, we're gonna walk down to our target, you know, 100 yards away, and and uh, Trey's wonderful brother, Trevin, is down there with us, and he has this new Ruger 22 pistol, and he hands it to me. He says, "Here, why don't you shoot my pistol." I say, "Okay, I'll I'll shoot it when we get down here." And so I look at it. He hands it to me. It's on safety. I make sure of it. I'm holding it strictly by the grip. And I, I dang sure double check it, you know. I've been around guns my whole life and always known to check it. So I check it and well, I don't have nothing on. I, I decide I'm gonna shove that thing right back here in, in the back of my britches as we're walking down here. So we're walking to the target and I'm talking. I, I don't remember what we're cussing and discussing and walking just trying to, to get it jobbed in there and it won't go. And, and finally I just, I push really hard and. When I pushed really hard, that, that thing just popped off and uh, scared the hell out of all of us. You know, everybody jumped. I jumped and blew my leg off the ground and just didn't really know what happened. We're all kind of in shock. And I, I remember our other buddy, Caden, asked me, he said, what, what the hell just happened? I said, I think I shot my leg. It, it kind of stung a little bit, but that was it. I mean, it felt like a, maybe an ant bite and then my leg got really tight, but really no no pain to speak of right then so I, I said i don't know maybe i just grazed it or or something I, I don't know it doesn't hurt that bad and so we just keep walking we walk all the way down to the target and as i'm walking i can kind of hear a little squish squish going on in my boot and i'm just kind of trying to keep quiet and keep my composure together wait 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 wait, wait. let me just cut in here <laughs> so you're telling me that you felt an ant bite and your leg tightened up and you told the other guys that that you think you shot yourself mm -hmm. but instead of pulling your pants down and seeing you just kept walking we did go keep going squish squish so we uh you know i hear the squish squish we get down there and as we're we're marking our bullet holes in the target i've got trevin which is trey's brother looking at me kind of funny i've got my buddy caden on the other side of me looking at me kind of funny and, and they're both kind of turning white and i'm not real sure why my my ankle's really starting to hurt at this point and so i i look down and there's a pretty good little puddle of blood underneath my boot and so i think reality kind of set in right there and, and i told the guys we 
we better get to the hospital. So we walk our butts that 100 yards back up to the pickup and... So, I got a question, question, question. Yeah. So, first off, between Trevin and Caden, at, how big was the blood piece that you saw on the ground? So, it had already filled your boot up? Yeah, it had already filled the boot up. So, it was pouring out it of your come, boot? It was coming out of the boot. All right. So, so much blood that it came, it was a cowboy boot, right? Mm -hmm. So, a 10-inch cowboy boot, and the, so much blood is filled up that it literally... Comes out, it overflows. It overflows. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes. All right. Um, and then, so... Puddle of blood probably yay big it really just started overflowing i mean they were watching it kind of grow okay and then so now the reaction of trevin and caden is now what like <laughs> okay you know trevin yeah 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 yeah. So he can't handle it trevin cannot handle blood and trevin's immediate reaction when the gun went off was oh my god you just shot yourself what are we gonna do we're gonna walk it was me trying to keep everybody else's composure. I knew if they freaked out, I was gonna lose my mind. I was gonna freak out and instantly hit the ground. I cannot handle seeing my own blood. I will pass out. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's happening. I'll say this, it doesn't matter how much of a, of a strong guy you think you are, Sometimes when you see your own blood or somebody else's blood, there's just nothing you can do about it. I've I've had the conversation with multiple doctors, and there's it, you can't even be mentally strong enough. So, anyway, all right. So you guys are walking back to the pickup. What does it feel like right now? So first feel like was an ant bite. Yeah. And then your leg tightened up. My calf got tight. It, it got really tight. Um, once I seen the blood, I kind of started feeling a little bit of pain. I felt it in my ankle which is weird, it was nowhere near the, the exit wound. But I could, it felt like my ankle was hurting really bad. And so by the time we get back to the pickup, it, it's really, the pain is really starting to, to set in a little bit. It's not terrible, but it's very, very uncomfortable. And uh, man, I, I just remember Trevin just freaking out, asking me, hey, do you want me to drive 100? How, how fast do you want me to go? How do I get there? Hazards on, hazards off. And I finally tell him, I'm like, Trevin, you got to relax. If you don't relax, I'm going to freak out. I'm going to panic. Everybody stay calm. Give me a beer. Let's go to the hospital. And so we did. They handed me a beer and we drove on to the hospital. So like, Trevin's driving. Trevin's driving. You're in the passenger seat. I'm in the passenger seat. Caden's in the bag. Have you taken your boot off yet? No. Pants off? No. So nothing, you just still no, have blood no, coming out of your... No tourniquet, no nothing. My mind was not working as, as it should. I mean got blood you gotta stop bleeding so all right from the time you guys got into the pickup after you discuss it's funny it's funny that whenever you're in an emergency situation and and uh, everybody that we're talking about here are some of the most hard grown-ass men you've ever met um, so it's not like they can't react to an emergency situation, but it's funny how your brain starts processing do I turn my hazards on how fast do I drive do I run the red lights that's something that you sh you guys should already be mentally preparing for. In the event of an emergency, what am I going to do in my town should I have to drive? But that's that's for you guys. All right, so how long from the time you shot yourself to the time that you get in the pickup, do you think? It's probably five to ten minutes, maybe. Probably right at five minutes. I don't know. I'd figure how long it takes to walk 100 yards sit there, look at your target a little bit, and then walk back. I mean, there was no run, there was no speed walk. It was just a normal pace. All right, so you get in the pickup, you go. What happens next? So we we go to the hospital. It's probably a 10, probably a 15 minute drive from where I live. So Trevin's driving like a maniac. And he's scaring the shit out of me, <laughs> honestly. So I, I mean, he's panicking, sheer panic. He, he's how he did down there when I got shot is how he's driving. I mean, we're all over the place, lights flashing, running lights, I mean, just maniac. I finally had to reach over and whop him and, and tell him, calm the hell down. If you don't, I'm gonna pass out. So I think from there on, it was pretty well radio silence. I do remember at the time I was dating one of Trevin's wife's friends who was a nurse and I was trying to call her the whole time to meet me at the hospital that I couldn't get a hold of her. I think she was working. Wouldn't answer her phone. 
so I'm panicking. Wives, why don't y'all answer the phone? Or girlfriends, why don't y'all answer the phone when we need you the most? You always want us to answer. Why can't y'all answer? Yeah, nonstop, you know? So finally, we're pulling into the hospital, and my phone starts ringing, and it's her. And I answer it, and I start panicking then. I don't know why. I think reality all just kind of set in. And as we pull up, I talk to her. I remember hanging up the phone and then just getting wobbly, getting dizzy. And you've, you've shot yourself. You went down to the Target. You came back, and now you drove to the hospital. And now you start getting wobbly and dizzy. The best you can, how long is this? Now, guys, remember, this, is a, this didn't hit your bone at all, right? It, it actually, it grazed right down the side of it. Grazed down the side of your bone. Yeah. So I know when you think somebody gets shot, it's some big deal, but this is like in the typical movies, like it was just a flesh wound. So how long before you started like, I guess essentially going into shock or whatever, mm -hmm. like feeling woozy and in your panic mode? Okay. So from probably the time the bullet went in till I panic, I get woozy at the hospital, as we're pulling into the hospital is 25 minutes maybe, maybe 30 minutes. And it was kind of a blur. I, I remember them wheeling me in and uh, instantly they got me into a, a room right there and they're getting me checked out. I remember coming back, my mind kind of coming back to, I relaxed a little bit and they were trying to cut my pants off of me and they were trying to cut my boots off of me which I've been a cowboy my whole life. You, you don't cut my boots. So I, I physically took my own boots off and I took my own pants off because back then I wasn't making a whole lot of money and couldn't really afford to go buy new boots and new pants. So I, I took them off myself and, and was able to crawl back in into the bed there. And they, uh, I remember some doctors coming in just sheer panic. Okay, so you, you jerk your own boots off. I can see the nurse right now. You're like, get away from me. I'm taking my own boots oh, yeah. off. Do you remember how much blood was in the boot then? Had you stopped bleeding yet? I think I had stopped bleeding by then because I, I don't remember any, like a lot of blood being in Trevin's pickup. I don't know. I, I, I really don't remember that part. Maybe we can get Trevin on to tell some more follow-up story. Um, okay, so at the time that you remember taking off your boots and your pants, had they given you any pain meds? No. No. So what, describe the pain at that time. So 25, 30, maybe 35 at, minutes at in. At that time, it, it was absolutely miserable. Uh, I remember, you know, being on the phone and hanging up the phone and it was about all I could take. It, it felt like my ankle had just been shattered. So at this point, I'm thinking the bullet went straight down my leg, through my ankle, exploded my ankle, and come out the bottom of my foot. Th that's what's going through my mind. So you have not seen what I, I still you. haven't seen it. Okay. So I get my boot off in the ER and my pants off. And I remember my sock just being dripping solid blood. All right. So I get my boot off, uh, get my britches off, pull my sock off. And this is the first time I've, I've seen it. So the whole time I'm, you know, I'm thinking this thing went all the way through my leg, through my ankle, blew out the bottom of my foot. I don't know what to expect. But all I see is an exit wound, probably the size of a quarter, right on the side of my calf. I don't know where it went in, but that's all I can see. So you think it was an exit wound because of your experience in shooting animals or whatever? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Entrance wound really small, exit wound big. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like I say, it's probably the size of a quarter, maybe, maybe bigger. So could you see, was it still bleeding then? It was trickling. Trickling. Yeah. And could you see like any meat or anything coming out? I know that's gory, but I'm just wondering uh, like what you saw. No, because it was one of them, like I said, man, seeing my own blood, it, I panicked. I, I, I remember kind of seeing that and looking away, laying back. So, you know, I, I, I see the blood, see the exit wound. I panic. I look away. Um, I think about this time is when my parents got to the hospital. And I remember them coming in there. Uh, it, at one point, I, I had to use the restroom really bad, and they tried to bring a wheelchair in for me to use the wheelchair, and, and me being the tough guy that I was, refused it. I said I would walk, and, and I remember walking with my mom. She walked me to the restroom, I don't know, 20, 30 feet away, and then they closed the door behind me into the restroom by myself, locked the door from the outside, and 
I remember using the restroom and getting very lightheaded and passing out. I'm yelling for somebody to come help me. I'm passing out. Nobody shows. Nobody shows. Finally, I'm laid out on the floor in a pool of blood in the bathroom before somebody realizes that, you know, I'm gone. And so they, they come in there and they get me out and they get me cleaned up. They bring in a crash cart because they think that I'm dying. And at this point, I'm, I'm kind of coming back to and I'm trying to tell them I'm, I'm fine. I just passed out. I, I can't handle my own blood. So I think it was right after that, they get me back to my room and that was when they gave me my first dose of morphine. Did not help. I mean, it, it still, at this point, it still feels like my ankle is exploded. That's the only thing that hurts is my ankle. It hurts like crazy. So we keep waiting. Uh, they do x-rays on me to make sure there's no bone damage or anything like that. They, they've already found the entry wound, which uh, came in right behind my knee and, and uh, you know, they, they'd explained to me, my ankle's fine, nothing else is injured. Through and through, bones clean, no vascular damage that they can tell, and they have plans of releasing me in the next 30 minutes. And so we're laying, I'm laying on this bed and, and uh, talking to my dad and, and my mom, and uh, I, I think at this point they tell me they're bringing my discharge papers, and, and uh, I remember signing some papers and then a, another surgeon walks in, kind of panicked. He reaches down and touches my foot and then runs out of the room and I don't see him again. And so it, it kind of has me a little worried. So I, I don't really know what's going on. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going home and next thing I know, there's a team of doctors and, and nurses and, and they have a, a freaking backboard. And they're rolling me around, throwing me on this backboard, strapping me down. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Like, where are we going? And uh, that's when they tell me, you're fixing to lose your foot. We think you have what's called compartment syndrome and you've lost, it's cut off circulation to your foot. We have to get you to Lubbock right now. And I remember telling them, I, I can't afford an ambulance ride. I can't afford this. And they say, no, no worries, you're going on a helicopter. Like, this is very urgent. This is life-threatening. You need there now. You're thinking you're leaving the hospital. How, how long at that point, from the time you have shot yourself to the time that you are getting strapped to that board on a helicopter? Uh, probably three to four hours, roughly. You know, I, I, it was probably four o'clock maybe when I, I shot myself in the leg. And so we're probably looking 7.30, 8 o'clock okay. in the evening. And so um, at this time, what is your pain level? They've already got you on you said morphine the first shot didn't work what did work when they were strapping me to the backboard to get on the helicopter they hit me with something that took my speech away took my ability to do anything i was having a conversation with my dad at the time they they shot that into me and i just remember going to couldn't speak and finally it kind of comes to and i ask them what the heck was that is what they gave me and I didn't feel a thing. Zero pain. I was the most content I had been all day long. I, I didn't feel anything. So were you cognizant of where you were? And yeah. 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 You just didn't feel any pain. Were you when they gave you the fentanyl? How long did it take before you re, like your your mind is somewhat clear again? Had you been on the helicopter or had they already got you on the helicopter? Instantly. Instantly. I tasted it and then it was instant. Okay. It, it was weird, you know, when they shoot you with the, any, when they inject anything in you, you taste it. Mm -hmm. So it was instantly, I, I tasted it and... What did it taste like? Do you remember? Iron. Iron. Maybe. No, it's okay. I, I have the same thing. I've had 17 surgeries. Mm -hmm. I've been knocked out a bunch and I remember always now, they are, they're always like, let me give you the margarita cocktail and it gets you really dizzy. Uh -huh. And then the next one's like, I think I can stay up. And I remember asking a doctor once, how long till I feel this? And he said, one revolution of your blood cycle. And it was like, boom, boom, gone. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so you think you're about four hours in. Uh-huh. And all right, tell us about getting strapped to the board and getting on the helicopter. All right, so now now I'm shot up with the, the fentanyl. I feel no pain. I'm, uh, I feel like a really, really happy drunk 
at this point. They hand me my phone and they wheel me out to the helicopter. And so we get on the helicopter and we take off. I think mid-flight, I probably started feeling a little more pain. And it's, it's a 45 minute flight from Clovis to Lubbock by a helicopter. So about mid-flight, I, I start feeling it again and, and they hit me with another, I guess you could call it like a microdose of it. Um, so on the helicopter, on the helicopter, sorry for interrupting, on the helicopter, are you're inside like a little gurney? Yeah. So can you look out the windows? Oh yeah. Yeah? But it, at this point, it's already dark now. Oh, okay. Um, I do, I knew where I was. I, mean, I remember, look, we flew right over my house. And I remember looking saying, yeah, that's where it happened right there, guys. Um, and was it just you? Did they let your parents on? No, just me. There, there's only room for me, the pilot, and two doctors. One in the very front passenger side, I guess you could call it, and then one right beside me. Okay, so in the time that you're on the helicopter, I'm guessing now your family's driving to Lubbock. They're driving to Lubbock. So if you've got a 45 minute flight and they've got about an hour, hour and a half, half drive, drive, so they were there 45 minutes, maybe an hour by, after you. By the time I get into my uh, emergency room, room, maybe 20 minutes, my parents are walking in. Like I said, it they flew me there, they're thinking, apartments in them and so they're running all kind of tests on me uh, blood work they're doing x-rays I think they did an MRI maybe just to see what kind of uh, damage is done to so the calf. explain to me because I don't know and I know you're not a doctor but to your best memory from a decade ago what is compartment syndrome so your calf is made up if I remember right they told me four different compartments and they run lengthways with your calf. Well, what I did when that bullet went through, it pierced the top side of one compartment and it came down through the other, came out of it toward the bottom side and into the very bottom of the other compartment. So essentially I had blood pooling up in that compartment and then spilling out of that compartment just out into my leg. Is in, into the the, chan the uh, bullet travel. Okay, so as they're doing all of these tests, do they just keep you on the fentanyl every time you say you're hurting? No, at this point, they pull me off of the fentanyl in there because I don't know why. Uh, they just did. It was several hours before they put me back on a fentanyl dose. And they would only give me just a little bit, maybe twice a day. Other than that, it had to be morphine in between. Which I'm, you know, that, it's a dangerous ass drug. It was before I knew anything about fentanyl, you know. Um, okay, so let's go back to, they're giving you the MRIs and everything, and so what does the doctor tell you now? You At this point, have you seen the entrance and the exit, right? At this point, I've seen both the entrance and the exit. I am now in the ICU where I'll stay for the next four days. And really, all they're doing now is just watching. They just want to make sure that this blood is not going to continue to pull up causing the compartment syndrome which it, in turn is going to be rotten blood inside your leg you're going to get blood poisoning and die other i mean they have to amputate if that happens so they're they're just watching is all they're so doing did they do anything to stop that from happening there was nothing they could do to stop that from happening all they could do was hope that it would clot up and stop filling into that compartment um so how how swollen did you get? Oh, hell, at least as big as my thigh, if not bigger, at uh, a couple of different points. I remember probably day two in the ICU. I refused a catheter, tough guy. I'm gonna get up and do this myself. So I remember going into the bathroom. I had no bandages on. They they wanted it to drain. Right, so, so they didn't stitch you up. No, like no stitches, bite. no bandages. They they wanted this thing to drain. I, I may have had a bandage on the top, but they wanted that bottom one draining. That was the only way to keep from getting the compartment syndrome. But I remember going into the restroom. Uh, I had to pee. So I start peeing, and the closer I get to finishing peeing, the more pressure I'm feeling in my leg. I, I don't know what the... Com what you know ties those two together i don't know but i feel like i'm fixing to die fixing it i mean my legs leg is fixing to explode and it's just building building and it, and it hurts so bad to pee at this point but i have to i keep going 
And about the time I think I can't take any more, the, my leg just, the exit wound explodes. I mean, there's blood everywhere. Blood just shoots everywhere. Scares the hell out of me. I'm trying not to pass out. I remember walking back to my bed and just bloody footprints, bloody trail going all the way back to my bed. How much blood do you think you, I know mean, it's probably hard to remember, but how much blood, how big was the puddle all over the ground? The size of this spool. I mean, it, it was the whole bathroom floor. It, it was massive. It was a lot. Did you feel relief when that happened? It, instant. Instant relief. Instant relief. So the blood was just pulling up? And it, 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 just, it, it had filled my calf up so much, and especially with the standing up and then kind of pushing to pee. I mean, at that point it hurt so bad I had to push to pee, but just that push, I mean, you could almost like watch that thing grow. And like I said, it, it was instantly, it just shot everywhere. And it, it, I'm turning and it, I mean, it's just squirting blood everywhere. Not like your heart's pumping, squirting, just a solid stream. And like I said, I'm, I'm hollering for the nurse. I make it back to my bed and, and I just I just laid out on the bed, you know, I'm ghost white and she comes in just sheer terror. <laughs> you know, what the hell happened? And I tell her what happened. I'm like, my, my leg exploded. I, I don't know what happened, you know? And so they get it all cleaned up and I remember probably the next day I got what's called foot drop. So essentially what foot drop is, is you're laying flat on your back, your toes are pointed up to the sky. My foot started sinking and my toes were pointed straight out. Once you get foot drop, you can't pick that back up by yourself. I had to, uh, they had to get me a boot that they could adjust the angle on and every so often they had to adjust it up to where my foot was back where it was supposed to be. And so painful, miserable. This time they're still giving you fentanyl or morphine back and forth? They were still back and forth on the fentanyl morphine. But that wasn't helping? It, it would for a minute. The fentanyl would put me to sleep, but that was about it. That, that was the only time I could sleep is when they, they put the fentanyl. Yeah, it was miserable, absolutely miserable. So now we're probably on day four in the ICU. I think this is my final day there. I get a physical therapist comes in and says I have to learn how to walk on crutches or with a walker before they'll let me even leave the hospital. So now I've got this fancy boot that's got all these little adjustments on it and my foot's at the proper angle now. So now I have to learn how to walk again. I have to go up and down a flight of stairs either on crutches or with a walker before they'll release me out. So I tried the crutches first. It was the hardest thing I think I've ever had to do going up and down the stairs. I've, I've never been on crutches ever in my life. So I opt for the walker. So they bring me a walker and I, I'm able to pass through and, and uh, they release me. So now I go home, I'm bushed up at my house for, well, I don't know, probably a couple of weeks. Uh, during this couple of weeks, I have to teach myself pretty well how to walk again. Once I take the boot off, putting any kind of weight or any kind of pressure on it is just absolute miserable. So probably, I don't know, I may be home for a week. My leg starts swelling up again, turning red, hot, just miserable pain. My exit wound is scabbed over now, and so I call the doctor. I'm like, hey, what, what do I need to do? Like, I, I think this thing's infected. And so they, uh, we get on like a video chat and the doctor says, no, 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 it, it doesn't look infected. It, it's not how it should be. They tell me to go take a hot bath. And as I'm in the hot bath, I need to take my two thumbs, which back then I had two thumbs, and run down, squeeze it down the-, the All trail. right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> this is my accident pr prone bussy. Real quick, why are you missing a thumb? Yeah, I cut it off team roping. He's a, he, I told you he was a cowboy. He's the real deal cowboy. And yeah. he was team roping. And if you dally thumb down, you're gonna lose your thumb. Yeah, we didn't dally thumb down. Oh, what'd you do? We slipped the coil out of this hand. 
Oh. And it half hitched over the thumb before it was instant. So you didn't mess up. I messed up with this hand. But you didn't die. Not, thumb. not this hand. All right, all right, all right. He didn't make the classic <laughs> mistake. All right, I'm, I'm trying to beef him up here. Like, he, he did a yeah. good job. I will say, I have, I don't know if I still have that video, but I had it on video. I, I have it on video. Yeah. And you, you can hear it and you can watch it fly by my head when it pops off. Ugh, maybe we'll put that in here. <laughs> All right, let's go back to you're in the bathtub so and they tell you to push it with they, two they thumbs. They tell me with two thumbs run straight down the track of the bullet. Where Nobody the bullet went. With two thumbs run straight down the track. With two thumbs run straight down the track, the path of the bullet. This is painful, but I'm, I'm laying in here in this tub and, and I'm squeezing on it and squeezing on it. Well, finally that scab, I guess, gets soft enough that that little bit of pressure, my leg explodes again. This time, it looks like grape jelly everywhere. It's all this coagulated blood that had been building up in my leg the whole time. Home alone, I panic, <laughs> I pass out in the tub. Luckily, I was able to hang over the side. I, I felt it coming on, but it was instant relief. Now, I had to do this several times over the next couple of weeks. So essentially, my, my exit wound didn't close up for three weeks. It, it constantly would, would ooze out. After about week two at home, I decide I'm going back to work. I, I can't put on pants. I can't put on boots. Uh, I, I can barely even touch my leg. I mean, it, it is miserable. And in the cowboy world, if you can't wear pants or you can't wear boots, there ain't a whole lot you can do. You, uh, you get shit jobs and lots of them. Okay, so to just point this out, guys, um, I know some of you guys live in a corporate world. Uh, Bussy lived in the blue collar of blue collar worlds. It's where we both grew up. And when you're when you're injured in in blue collar worlds that aren't corporate worlds, you're not getting paid. So that's why he's like, I have to go back to work because I have to get paid because I know. Did you have insurance at the time? No. Had zero insurance, which I, I think this is a good thing. This is something that I'm proud of America for. Like. They got you in, they took care of you, mm -hmm. and they didn't even care if you had insurance, right? Right. Um, but you have to get back to work, right? We gotta mm -hmm. get back to work. Oh yeah. Okay, so now we're back to work. Wearing shorts, I think at the time, the guys I worked for uh, had just bought a feedlot. And we were essentially remodeling this old feedlot. So there was a lot of concrete work, post setting stuff going on. That's where I got to pretty well stay for the next month i i was they wouldn't let me get back on a horse they they would not let me work how i wanted to work several times throughout the day i may have to leave go back home soak my leg and apply pressure and and drain it it may go half a day it may go every hour it was kind of hit and miss it, it was it was miserable honestly Hold on right there. jump in so um you're, you're three weeks in right now. How many? How long were you still able to drain blood from your leg? Right, it was three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. So for three weeks, at least once a day, twice a day, you're draining the blood oh, on yeah. your leg. Yeah. How much blood would come out? None of it was ever as much as the the first bath when I had to do it. That one, shoot, I don't know. Maybe after that, it, it was it progressively got less and less. So right now, are you on crutches or a walker? I was on a walker. I was on that walker for two weeks probably after I got home. I, I just, I couldn't put any weight on that foot. Uh, I couldn't function with the crutches doing what I needed to do. I had a big set of stairs that went up into my house that I had to climb every day in and out. Uh, crutches weren't an option for me. They, they didn't work for me. Also being at home, they put me on some pretty high-powered painkillers, which I was terrified of. So I stored them in the very top cabinet in my kitchen to keep me from being able to just pop them anytime. I, I, uh, this, why are you terrified of pain pills? I didn't want to get addicted to them. I already had a pretty wild lifestyle, especially in the younger years before then, but even, even during that time, I was still really wild. I, I drank a lot of beer. And I really did not want to go to mixing pills and beer and, and get caught up in the drug world. I, I had some pretty good friends over the years that got caught up in the drug world. And I mean, physically they're here, mentally they're, they're not. 
So I have the same fear. Um, I've seen a lot of people in my life, started watching it in my dad's life and then in our life. Uh, I remember several guys my dad worked with got hurt in a car wreck or something, got on the pain pills. Mm -hmm. I've had a family member do the same. And um, it sucks. Like I don't, oh, yeah. I am terrified of pain pills. I did the same thing. I, I literally remember having to have my hair pulled by my wife until I passed out because I was hurting so bad. Yeah. So same fear, and I don't know if that fear is like a culture of us, the guys we hung, hung around, yeah. and the rest of the world's not scared of that. They're like, you idiot, take the pain take pills. Take the pills, I, I don't know, man. I, I lived on Advil. I would take it when it got so unbearable that I, I couldn't stand it. I would take one of the pain pills, and but I had to get up. I had to make myself walk over and get them. And I had to fight the urge to take them with me back to my chair, you know, leave them up here. So um, do you have any idea what antibiotics they had you on mm. and how long they had you on antibiotics? I, it wasn't, it wasn't very long. It, you know, obviously going into the hospital, they started me instantly on antibiotics. Uh, I believe they gave me a tetanus shot too. I don't know, maybe a week's worth of antibiotics. Or 10 days or whatever they took. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot. So there wasn't anything that you remember. It was like, let's make sure you don't have tetanus and let's make sure you don't have this infection. Mm -hmm. But the blood coming out wasn't an infection. It was just- No, it, it was coagulated blood that was held up in the compartment of my calf. It needed out and, and that's what it was. So it, I mean, it just kept expanding. So that relieving that pressure, I, I had to squeeze it out. So I guess that you knew you were like, oh, I got too much pressure on my calf. Mm -hmm. It's time to go. It's time to go. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm assuming then now I'm just assuming, but had you not ever talked to the doctor, it would have probably went until it busted the scab off anyway. Like oh, it was coming yeah. out. Yes. Yeah, same as it, it did in the hospital when I was using the restroom. Had, had I not done that, it, yeah, it would have. You would have done the same the, thing. Yeah, the pressure would have just popped the scab. Probably been in a whole lot more pain. Uh, just, you know, that warm water definitely softened it up, made it made it pretty easy in an already tender, very tender location. So this is a really good time to talk to you guys about who one of the sponsors of the channel today. It's Jace Medical. Um, I think this is a really good time for you to be able to go to Jace and um, we'll link it down below and use code OUTLAW if you take a look at Jace's products and the, the antibiotics that they give you, I'm not a doctor, I don't know anything about antibiotics, but what I do know is it has the standard ones, amoxicillin, uh, maybe it has penicillin. I don't know all of the stuff that it has in there, but the, the $1,200-ish major pack, has everything that you would need in the event something like this happens because you don't know that if you were on a hunting trip somewhere, you might need to start ant antibiotics. If you're one of the ones that are like, hey man, the world's ending, the sky is falling, uh, WROL, SHTF, whatever that is, you might wanna have them antibiotics on hand because, Bussy, I just wanna ask, if you didn't have antibiotics and a doctor to help you with your foot, and I mean, were they critical to you making it through this? Oh, absolutely, they're, they're absolutely. Uh, the doctor we had at the first hospital I went to was oblivious to any of it. I mean, I was 30 minutes from going home. Had that surgeon not been walking by, I wouldn't have a foot. Probably wouldn't have anything below the knee. Yeah. You know, it, it, I was lucky. Dang. Yeah, and it's, a, um, it's funny how it's like, a, I don't know, I think it's kind of like, a, I, don't, I don't know, maybe divine intervention that a doctor is just walking by and is like, hey, and then grabs your foot, right? Yeah. Um, because, you know, not all doctors have the same experience and, um, you know, not all of us are happy with the hospital in the little hometown. Um, many, many terror stories, but we, like, I really believe that everybody in the medical staff is doing what they can to help you. Right. Um, okay. So we're, we're now, you're, you're in shorts, you're in flip flops, you're squeezing it. You're, mm -hmm. you're done with squeezing it. Now it starts to scab up. What happens? Okay. So now I'm, I'm feeling pretty ambitious, feeling pretty froggy, feeling pretty good. I feel at this point, I can finally put on a pair of starch. I don't know, you know me, I I cannot put on a pair of pants that's not starch. I, I can't put on a shirt that's not ironed. It, it drives me bonkers. So having to wear shorts all this time just really drove me nuts. So I finally feel brave enough. I'm, I'm gonna put on a pair of pants 
and I struggle and I struggle and almost really just looking at the exit wound hurt. When anything brushed it, it anywhere between my exit wound and my ankle, it felt like a wire brush just being scrubbed all over my skin. It, it was unbearable. But I'm bound and determined I'm going to get back on a horse and I'm working. No more shoveling, no more pouring concrete. I'm, I'm getting back on a horse. And so I tough it through. And for years, two, three, four, five years, I, I don't even remember it. Just putting on a sock was, was pain, you know. Now, 12 years later, you know, I, I can touch it and I can fiddle around with that part of my leg and... It's tender, but it, it's nothing like it was that, that first four or five years. So 12 years later, you can still push on it and it's tender? In a different area. There was some nerve damage there. I feel it more closer to my ankle. The, the skin, the softer skin, kind of closer to your ankle. I mean, it, it just brushing it, it's still, if I brush it the wrong way, I mean, it feels like a wire brush still, but very, very rarely. So it does, has it affected your, now remember guys, this didn't hit any bone. Um, has it affected, does it affect your day-to-day -day life now? Oh, no. No, yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. It, it did when it happened, obviously, for a long time. I mean, it, it was probably a three-month ordeal of uh, start to finish before I felt normal. Okay, so now let's go back over now that you know some things. Um, had you had a tourniquet now would you have put a tourniquet on absolutely yeah you would have absolutely okay um do you do you put a pistol do you put it in your pants do you put it in your belt do you put how do you carry your pistol now honestly uh i haven't carried a pistol back there i hadn't even attempted to put one back there since then 12 years ago um i have a, a leather holster that when I do carry a pistol, I, I don't carry every day, but when I do carry, it goes on my belt right here on the side. I, I take it hunting, whatnot. I carry it in my pickup every day. I, I don't carry on my person. So guys, one of the things that I, the reason I wanted to do this video with Travis is um, holsters are, this is what I carry every day. So I've got a Glock 48, it always has one in it, and I've got this Incog Eclipse holster. And I mean, you can see my sweat on it. You can see how long I've carried it. You can see in my gun, my freaking lint from my clothes and my dead skin, whatever. I carry this every single day. Here's what I will tell you. If you're gonna have a pistol, the same time you buy a pistol, you buy a holster. I'm not flagging myself here, notice this. You buy a holster. So if you're like, hey, I'm gonna get a pistol and I know I'm gonna get this pistol, order the holster first, because it takes a little longer. Then you can get a pistol because the number one are the four firearm safety rules that we know. One of them is never point a firearm at anything you're not willing to destroy, including yourself. Guys, I see so many people like Travis. They put it in their in their back pocket right here, back in their belt, and they can shoot their calf or their their ankle. They put it. Um, I don't know, they, they cross their hand or when they draw, they cross their foot. Or a lot of times, instead of you putting your hand up when you draw, so you know we our first draw stroke is here, they keep their hands out here and it makes it to where you have a chance on shooting yourself in the hand, especially if you're scared. That's why the draw stroke is here, so I'm protecting this hand, right? Or maybe it's down here, whichever one you like, but it's here so that I don't shoot myself in the hand. Shooting yourself is a big deal. Like the number one rule of a gunfight, we're bringing this back to gunfighting, not target shooting. Number one rule of a gunfight is don't get shot in the gunfight. This includes shooting yourself in the gunfight. Number two rule though, Bussy, is bring a gun to the gunfight. You gotta carry a gun every day. You do. So how long until you picked up a gun again? Great question. How long till you picked up a gun again? Honestly, I've, I've never been scared of weapons. It. it had zero effect on my shooting, my being comfortable around guns. That played no effect with me. Honestly, I don't know. It, I'm assuming pretty quick. Uh, you guys, you, Trevin, y'all were out there all the time. So anytime I seen any of you guys down there, I, I went down to the range and, and shot with you. I mean, you always had cool shit to play with. 
did the doctors say you were lucky? Were there oh, like yeah. what, what? What was that? Oh no, they they said I was absolutely lucky. I I was lucky. The bullet ran straight down beside the bone. It didn't shatter the bone. It didn't go into the bone. It hugged the bone and it essentially just slid right beside it. I was lucky I had a, a vascular surgeon walking by and noticed something was wrong with my foot. I, I was lucky I only had one entry and one exit wound because I missed my big toe by millimeters. It, it actually cut a little horseshoe out of the stitching on uh, my leather sole boot. You still got those boots? No. I don't. Wouldn't let him cut them, but no. he's got them. All right, so do you do you have the scar? Can you show us the scar? I do. All right, but first, but first, hold on, hold on. I got something for you. I got something. Come over here, Matt. Come on. Bussy has no idea what's going on. He has no idea at all. And, you know, being the clever guy I am, I call my buddies at Ballistic Dummy Lab. Bussy, do you think we could reenact you <laughs> shooting yourself really? in the leg? Oh, man. Here we go. I knew. Something. And I got the pistol. Oh. Is this a similar pistol? That is almost similar. This one's a little more bougie than the one I remember, but it is very much similar. What is it? Very Ruger? much. Yeah, it's it a is a Ruger Mark IV. Mark IV. So his was a Mark, Mark III. III. All right. So he's lucky. This is the wrong leg, is it? Or is this the right leg? This is the wrong leg. I got an idea. Do you think that we could put this here, in his let's, pants let's just, uh... and then let him stick it back in his... I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm going to lay it right here like so so that it's safe show us here where it went in so essentially the the bullet came in right here the entry wound right behind my knee and it traveled down alongside the bone through my calf and it kind of made a little outward angle it, it came out somewhere in this area right here and so the when the your your if this is so your calf might have got about this big then oh every bit and then so you would have to take your two thumbs and push down like and, this yep and then it would top, just top to bottom squirt blood and it would squirt everywhere so what was what was essentially happening the way you understood it is one of these was a compartment this would fill up with mm -hmm. blood and then you would have to just squirt oh or was this filling up with blood and you're pushing it out no i had to i had to squeeze down the bottom side of the calf is what was filling up with blood. Okay. The, the thickest part of your calf is right in here, which is where all your compartments are. Where that thing went in, it punctured two of them compartments. Uh, one of them not being able to drain out. Okay. It, it had to fill up so high before it could drain out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And But you felt most of the pain down here in your ankle all because... All of the pain I felt in the ankle. The blood was coming down here. I, I guess. I don't know. And like I say, the, the nerve damage I felt is in this area where the exit wound on my leg is up here. This is where all... So tender. So tender. All right, all right. Let's see if you can reenact shooting yourself. I have never shot a calf of a human, but I figure since you're the pro, give her a shot, bro. Okay. Well, let's, uh... Were there any last words? Oh, he said... Let's, let's not do this again. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I don't know. It needs to bend a little, but uh, it'll, it'll do. So just imagine, so you had it right here. You were sticking it in the back of your sticking belt. Sticking it in the back of my britches. So All we're right. coming at a downward angle. All right. It honestly went right between the crack of my ass and burned a, a little line in my drawers. Oh, nice. Come Did you right save out. those? We did for a long time. <laughs> I even still had the pants for a long time. Well, that's crazy. You got to yeah. save them mementos for I, your kid. I know. Hey, listen. So this is for for my 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 little. I don't know what he would be. My little godson Tate. One day you're gonna be old enough to see this and know your dad was a crazy crazy dude. All right, reenact. Okay. So to the best of my ability, like I said, this uh, this bullet kind of went down my butt cheeks and down through here. So we're we're kind of going to try and reenact that movement about right there. Oh, look at it right here, dude. That would that was like uh um of course, where where sh where did it hit you, Bussy? It came in right here. Okay, so it hit you right here. You got it a, you got it here, I but look at this. Lower. And no joke, guys, where he shot, it almost made the exact same impact way, right? Just it just identical. All right, let's try to shoot it one more time right there. This, okay. I can't believe that this is almost an identical 
portions. So look, I think maybe we can see right here the damage that it did. So if you guys look right here and you see that how bullets work and you can see all through here is the damage, right? So here's the rip and then you can see bullets come in and then they expand and this is the damage channel and then they come back out. And of course this one didn't come out, but can you explain more about the compartments now? Because this is why you were pushing the blood out, right? Yes. So right in here, kind of where you see most of this damage, these are where your compartments in your calf are. And they funnel, they channel all the way down here. They get really small down here. They taper down. So what happened is I punctured two of these compartments with the, the bullet. So what I had to do is when I would take my hot bath or whatever, I would have to take both thumbs and run them down that channel to get that blood to come out. This should be an exit wound right here, but that bullet didn't leave. And just constantly squeeze so, them so out. So the reason then, because, so the blood is coming into your ankle and that's why you had so much ankle pain? Because mm -hmm. it was just filling up with blood? I, I'm assuming, I, I'm not sure. I, I think it's more nerve than anything down here in the ankle. Uh, I mean, the nerves are crazy. I mean, you may have a nerve up here that you do something up here, you feel it in your big toe. Okay, um, that makes sense. Yeah, it's like even with my thumb. I mean, I, I feel felt things with my thumb that shouldn't be there. So what was happening then inside of one of the compartments is it would fill up with blood, mm -hmm. you would squish out the jelly. I had to squeeze out the jelly. It would coagulate in there, build pressure, build pressure, build pressure. I had to squeeze it out to relieve the pressure. All right, let's see if we can shoot it again and get it closer to here. Let's see if we can get it closer. Here we go. Here we go. Take two. Let's get a little closer to it. What do you say? Look at that. That one almost came out right there. So the ballistic. That is the trajectory right there. That is the trajectory. That is Look identical. That. That's freaking awesome. That is identical. I bet you guys will start wearing a holster now, won't you? All right, Bussy, let's see it, bro. Show us the show us the scar. Do you want to see the scars? I want to see the scars. <laughs> okay. Chicks dig scars. Chicks dig scars. Don't don't mind my. Does, uh, your, does your wife like my tall socks? Does she play with your scar? No. Old habits die hard. I still like I wore with boots. So right here is going to be the exit wound where it came out, almost identical to where that one should have came out. And I don't know if you can see under here, but the entry entry wound is, I believe, right there. And then I guess this is like that bullet it, channel? Um, essentially, that's kind of the channel it followed right there. It's kind of where, where that calf line is. It Right in here is that top compartment, or the first compartment, and it went through this compartment and this compartment, and it came out. That's just one of those difficult things. Now, am I saying don't get one? Absolutely not, because I think Travis could have used one really big right now. I have one in my truck, I have one on my kit, because you never know that even in WROL, somebody takes a, a round or gets cut really bad, and you keeping them alive might be like your surgeon that comes and grabs your foot. Right. So, any, any words of wisdom that you would give to people? Well, get a holster. At the end of the day, that that's what it boils down to. Yeah, get, get guys, a, a holster is a requirement with a pistol. What else? Tourniquet. Tourniquet for sure. Well, <laughs> yeah, absolutely need a tourniquet. Uh, like I say, hindsight, if I'd have had one, I, I, I probably would have used it. Yeah. I mean, I, I know there were several options, belts, whatever, at, at the time, but none of that crossed my mind. Always remember the firearm safety rule. Never point a gun at anything you're not willing to destroy, especially yourself.